Well, it's a rainy, drizzly day today. Can't really get out and chase the birds around. I'll get to go to work later. We'll see how well that goes. So, I've been watching a few things in the world happening, in the country, in the state, and locally. Some things that just don't make sense. So, it's the end of October of 21 now. COVID's been running around for a good year and a half now. So, you know, as we all know, when the COVID all ramped up initially, the truck drivers, the store clerks, your police, your fire, your EMS, your hospital personnel, your essential workers, as they were termed, were being called heroes because they were the ones keeping the country going, keeping things going, keeping things moving, keeping ambulances rolling, keeping your fire trucks rolling, police services, keeping grocery stores stocked, you know, the things you need to, to keep surviving. Then, of course, we had the segregation, separation of essential workers, non-essential workers. Non-essentials, some were forced out of work. We we're not, not even going to get into that. Now, here we are, a year and a half later. And the so-called heroes that were hailed and praised are now being squashed being stepped on and because many aren't getting the vaccination that we all know doesn't work we all know it doesn't do anything it doesn't keep you from getting the covid but yet people are losing their jobs over it so the state i live in our illustrious governor in all of her infinite wisdom as she's done for the last year and a half hasn't cared about the legislature hasn't cared about our elected representatives and what they've said what they've wanted she's decided she's going to do what she's wanted to do and that's what we've had to deal with so she decided that all healthcare workers were going to have to have this useless COVID vaccination by the 1st of October. Well, now it's the end of October. So the first of the month deadline got pushed back, and now it's going to be the end of this month, another couple days. So if you don't have your shot, that's not going to prevent you from getting the virus. It's not going to prevent you from spreading the virus. You're out of a job. Screw you. A year ago, a year and a half ago, you was heroes. You was good people. You were saving the day. And now you're, you're nothing. You're expendable. We don't care about you anymore. And in a nutshell, that's how it's going. But the good news She's rolling out this $14 million plan is going to fix everything. So all the people that are losing their jobs, nurses, doctors, EMTs, um, which she claims is not causing a healthcare worker shortage. So even though we're short staffed already and we're losing people, it's not causing a problem according to her. So she knows. This $14 million is going to start fixing it. So, you know, apparently it's going to start pulling nurses and doctors and EMTs out of assholes from somewhere and uh, have them up and running pretty quick. Well, sorry, but you, you can't find professionals like that. You can't just throw an advertisement out on the street and throw them behind a cash register like you can at a store and have them trained up in a week or two and they're rocking and rolling. It don't work that way. So where are all these new magical people going to come from to replace all the people who were lost? Oh, well, they're not. 
So we'll just take this money and pay the people who are remaining overtime and more money. Well, those people are going to get burned out faster. They've already had their asses handed to them the last year and a half. And kudos to them. I mean, they busted their butts. And it's going to get harder and worse on them over a useless vaccination. So, sure, some doctors, some people make good money doing this type of stuff. That's okay. That's all good and fine. But then you have rural areas where people do the same type of jobs. EMTs, police officers, firefighters. Um, you got to have them. And what do they get paid? What do they get for benefits? Nothing. Then you look at the real world. Outside of the little public safety bubble. That's, you know, this big. And then you have everybody else out there. What are they getting paid? What are they getting for benefits? Then we kind of compare the two. So around here, what do EMTs get paid? Not much. Um, there's an ambulance service in the area. I'm not going to sit here and go through all the ones in the county or the next county because that'll take all day and probably crash YouTube. Same with fire departments. They're all mostly volunteer. They're free labor. Those days are quickly coming to an end. You can't find anybody to do that anymore. So anyway, back on the EMS, EMS thing. Look at the jobs EMS people have to do. Death, blood, guts, gore. Breaking the news to families, loved ones, that people have died. Sometimes you have to deal with the worst of the worst with your own families. I've been there. I've done it. I did 17 years in EMS. I've had to work with and work on people that I've known all my life. My last call was somebody who died that I'd known about all my life. And that's how it rolls. So what do you make? What do you get paid? You don't make a living at it. So anyway, one of the services in this area, the EMS crew gets paid two dollars an hour. Two bucks an hour in the year 2021 to be on call. So being on call, where can they go? What can they do? Not much. They can't run 30 miles away. They can't run 20 miles away. Can't go out and do much with the family. They got to be readily available. So when those tones drop from the dispatch gods, they can go jump in that rig and they're hauling it to go to the call for $2 an hour on a 12 hour shift. So they get a call. If they don't get a call, they made 24 hours, 24 hours, $24 for the day. Wow. You just committed yourself to a 12 hour shift and you made 24 bucks before taxes. So when the feds and the state get done with you. What do you got left? 20 bucks? Big deal. You didn't even get a half tank of gas if you have a pickup truck. So you're not making any money doing that. What about grocery shopping and heating your house? Raising your family, putting your kids on, you know, clothes on your kids' backs. Now, what about you get a call? Oh, well. You're just a driver. You don't have a license, an EMS license, so you're the ambulance driver. Well, they're important people too. Without somebody driving it, it don't move. They get $50 for a call. All right. If you're an EMT, you get 75 All right. It's a little bit better. So... You get one call today. Well, the driver, what's 50 plus 
25 we'll call it 75 bucks so for your on-call pay of your two dollars an hour and you made 50 bucks to go take that call hey you made 75 dollars to work today for 12 hour shift what's that boil down to five six dollars an hour congratulations man hey you're the emt you had to go to school you had to study get training you had to pass a test you had to give up your your fingerprints nowadays i mean when i get an ems was in the 90s you didn't do all this crap i took my test on paper now it's on computers and from what i hear you pretty much get your butt probe before you can even get in the room you gotta go take a test then you gotta do a practical test you gotta do all this continuing education every year to keep your license oh cool you made 75 dollars plus 25 Hey, you made $100 for that 12-hour shift. So what's that boil down to? Yeah, about $8.30 an hour for the 12 hours that you just committed to go save lives and crawl around the side of mangled up wrecks and deal with mangled up children. All the destruction and death and gore that you have to deal with. Well, that's what you made today to save lives, public safety. That, that's how it rolls. What do you get for benefits? Health insurance? No, nope, you don't get none of that. What about training? Well, the department pays for that, but you have to take your own time and go do that for free. Yeah. So that's how our EMS people are treated. So how about the fire department people, our firefighters? What do they get? They don't get nothing. They're even worse. That at least they're not committed to doing shifts. The tones drop out. Oh, there's a structure fire today. Some factories burning down. Well, the hell with that. I ain't going to that. I don't feel like it. They don't have to go. If you're a police officer, you're on duty. You're an EMS. You're on duty. You have to go. You don't have a choice. But the firefighters, they're volunteer. They come. They save your house. They get injured. They did it for you for nothing, guys. And then when, you know, you go and propose to your town to try and pay them something, people whine and bitch and complain because your taxes might go up $20 a year. But they call 911 because their kitchen's on fire. They want you here just like that. So how about your, your local cops in these areas? What do they get? <laughs> The police department in my town, it doesn't even exist anymore. It, it, it's still it's still there, but nobody works. Nobody's turning tires because it's 16 bucks an hour. Who wants to be a cop for 16 bucks an hour? And you can go to Walmart right now as an overnight stalker, throwing crap on shelves and get $19.50 an hour. Wow. Um, there's... Maine is a, a weird, screwed-up state. They've got two different flavors of law enforcement. You've got part-time guys and full-time guys. So the part-time guys, they only let you work X amount of hours in a calendar year. Then the full-time guys, you can work till you're dead. They don't care. Well, the part-time guys can take all the risks, have all the same headaches and problems as full-time guys. But you don't get the perks and the benefits. So these guys, you know, these part-timers, well, people want to kill them too. Uh, they get dragged to court, they get the headaches, the hassles, just like the full-time guys. Hmm. So, these guys can only work 20 hours a week on average. These guys can do 40, 60, 80, 100, whatever they want. If these guys go over, they can be decertified by the academy and never be allowed to be a cop again in the state 
because they were a naughty boy and they worked too much. Or a girl, whichever. So you get that restriction. But yet, feel free to go out and get your ass killed. That That's cool. You know, no problem with that. At least you didn't do it working more than 1,040 hours a year. So if you get killed at year uh, mark 500 on your hours, 600, eh, we don't care. You know, do it within your time limit. But my God, if you worked a half an hour over and you got killed or something happened to that, oh, that's bad. So anyway, that's neither here nor there. So you're working part time, you don't get any benefits, you're working $16, $17 an hour job. No health insurance, no perks, no nothing, just nothing but headaches and stress. And then you look at Walmart going, hey, why can't I go to Walmart? People don't really want to stab or shoot or kill the guys throwing the crap on the shelves overnight. And I can make nineteen fifty an hour. And they have like 10% discount cards for employees. That's their perk. So I could go work there 40 hours a week. I don't have this time restriction. So I could like get overtime and stuff and not get thrown out because I work too much. And banned from ever working at Walmart again. Hmm, might be an option. Or maybe I could go to McDonald's. McDonald's is starting pay. You could be a kid in high school and, and make just as much as a cop. Plus, you can get, I'm looking at it right here, you can get tuition assistance up to twenty five to $3,000 a year. Free meals at McDonald's, too, if you're an employee. You can get employer match 401k. You can get health insurance. Great starting pay. McDonald's is like $15 an hour starting out. Um, you can get some advancement. Not bad for a choking puke. Hey. Or you can go get into public safety and save lives. And people want to kill firefighters and kill EMTs too. I mean, I understand people want to kill cops, but why kill EMS people and firefighters? It happens. Now, we could also go to Aroma Joe's. Which, a year ago, last time I looked, they were starting off. If you don't know what Roma Joe's is, it's a little drive through coffee shop. <laughs> so, you can go get a job there, chucking coffee out of drive-up window for 16 bucks an hour. It's probably more than that now. I don't know what they get for perks and benefits, but it's probably safer than public safety. You're probably not exposed to very much coronavirus. Probably not exposed to hepatitis or AIDS, HIV, and some of the other crap that people have. Or maybe you could go to Freshies and get a job. And these are all jobs you don't need much education for. You could be in high school, teenager. You go to Freshies and start out at $17 an hour. That's what I saw on their sign a few months ago. Hmm. Does this make sense? You know, it's pretty cool that a kid in high school can start out making that much money, or even an adult that needs a job can make that much money starting off. But those jobs don't require the liability and all the training and continuing education that the public safety people do. And they're paying just as well, if not better. But yet when you go to your towns and your municipalities to try and get a little more money for equipment or a little bit more money for payroll to get raises, oh, well, we'll give you a 50 cent raise this year. Well, congratulations, you gave your employees 50 cents more an hour but you still haven't caught up to the real world, what they're doing. So where's your incentive to keep your public safety people on the job? And now we have 
our governor, like I explained earlier, try to weed people out because they won't get this shot. You know, it's, you're burning the candles at both ends here, and eventually you're going to get in the middle and have nothing left. So what do you do? That's just some food for thought. Try not to get on a rant here, but that is the facts and reality of how it's going in this area. Um, there is two, two ambulance services that went public a couple of months ago when this governor throughout her vaccine mandate for public safety people. And they went public and said, if you go through with this, these ambulances, there's going to be nothing left because nobody's going to get the shot. She don't care. She don't care that rural Maine is going to lose EMS services. She don't care. It's not bothering her. It's not affecting her. She's just throwing money at the problem. She's getting from the feds, which all well, comes from us that pay taxes. So who's ultimately paying the price for it? The citizens and the community members. That's what you get. So we'll just see how this continues to go and flushes out, I guess. But I mean, public safety people are, are dropping like flies, and unfortunately, all the odds are stacked against them. So with that, we'll catch you later.